Okay, we're in section 10.5 of trig. Finding probabilities using the standard normal distribution. Now, keep in mind that that's the, the parent normal distribution, but it's been uh, modified with those two scale changes we talked about in the last section. And the most important thing, yes, the domain is still all real numbers, but the area under the curve is equal to 1. And that's the important part because then we can use this standard normal distribution to uh, look at um, probabilities. And so we need to understand how it works. And then uh, in the next section, we'll get into story problem situations where we can apply it. Well, so the z-axis is uh, your horizontal axis. And you'll notice that the average mu is 0. And the standard deviation is 1. Every unit on the z-axis is really a z-score. So that's why I'm saying to you, z-scores are standard deviations. So when we talk about z-scores, they are really standard deviations away from the, the average. So what does a z-score of 2.3 mean? A z-score of 2.3 means 2.3 standard deviations above the mean. Okay. Uh, z equals negative 0.5 means 0.5 standard deviations below the mean. The mean being zero. Let's look at an example. How do we find the probability that z is less than 0.85? Well, first we need to draw a picture. So we've got this standard normal looking curve, zero being in the middle, and 0.85 is less than one unit on the right of the origin. And we want z less than 0.85, so that would be everything shaded to the left. Now that we know that our answer is going to be greater than a half, because everything from zero on down is half of the total, and the total is one, so we know it's bigger than 0.5. Now we have a function on our graphing calculator called normal CDF, and we're going to get into that in a minute. But it will be asking me for a left bound and a right bound. So I've got I've easily can see in this example what my right bound is going to be, but I have no idea what my left bound is going to be unless I understand more about the z-axis. And so we're going to do a couple questions here. We'll come back to this question, and we'll be able to figure out what left boundary we should be using. So let's understand something. We've got, I don't know if it's going to be too hard to read. Try to scoot it over as much as possible. If you do a normal CDF from negative 1 to positive 1, right? So in terms of the graph, 0 being in the middle, negative 1 being on the left, one being on the right. We're looking for all of this area right here. That is, I'm going to scoot it over just a little bit, and then I'll come back. Within one standard deviation of the mean, which is mu equaling zero, within one standard deviation of the average. So, find your calculator. Get to that distribution button. Remember, it's right above the VARS. All right, I go second, and then hit that VARS button. Second one down says normal CDF. That stands for cumulative distribution function. 
I can even scoot this down and write that. Cumulative distribution function. So that's the one I want to choose. So negative 1, comma 1. Negative 1. Sorry, my comma looks a little messed up. It says that there's 68.3%. <coughs> Sorry for a second there. I, I had a sneeze, and I uh, probably would have blown out all your eardrums uh, listening to my sneeze. I don't know if you want to write that down, Schneider. That's not really that funny. Anyway, so 68.3% uh, is your within one standard deviation. How about within two standard deviations? So now we're talking about expanding this out on the poorly drawn. Um, Bell-shaped curve to two standard deviations. So I hit second enter and I bring back the previous calculator instruction. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to alter these to two, negative two and positive two. And it says that, whoa, I got 95.4%. 95.4% of the area is between those two z-scores or standard deviations. What about within three standard deviations? Three standard deviations. Well, it can't go up a whole lot more because, whoops, um, isn't one the total of the whole curve, under the area under the whole curve? Point ninety nine point seven percent. Wow. Okay, that's within three standard deviations. I know I wrote that off to the side. If you want to write that down, you can. Within three, within two standard deviations of the average, within three standard deviations of the average. But those are the numbers, right? Sixty eight point three, ninety five point four, ninety nine point seven. Okay, since most of the area is between negative 3 and positive 3, that means I'm going to choose something in example 1. I'm going to go back to the example 1 question and answer that now. It says, now to answer example 1, what's a good left boundary since the domain is all real numbers? I mean, we want everything that's less than 0.85. So I'm going to choose a left bound, which is past negative 3. I always pick negative 10. But it doesn't matter. You could pick negative 25. You could pick negative 17. You could pick negative 100. I don't really care as long as it's past negative 3. Because most of the area is contained between negative 3 and positive 3. So it is okay to pick a, a left boundary in this case. That is smaller than negative 3, like negative 10. So that's what I'm going to do. So get back in the handy-dandy machine there. Second bars, which is the distribution section. Normal CDF. Negative 10, comma, 0.85. Says that my area is 80%, 80.2%. Well, what about these two? What if I want to find the probability that Z is between 0 and 0.85? Well, look there, they gave me a left bound and a right bound. So, you know, in my little picture. I got 0 0.85 and 0. We're looking for this skinny section right there. So they gave me the left bound and the right bound. So I can just change it. My left bound. Oh, my left bound isn't 0 0.85. What am I thinking? 0, comma, 0 0.85. Got my left bound and my right bound. It says 0 0.302.
What about greater than 0.85? So zero's in the middle, 0.85 is here, and I want greater than that. Well, I need to pick a right bound this time. I've got my left bound, I've got my normal CDF. Left bound, oops, not zero. Look at me, I'm a junior having a senior moment. Yeah, write that one down, Schneider, that was funny. So I got 0.85, and I'm moving this out to the right. So it's going to be greater than 3, something like positive 10. It has to be greater than 3 because most of the area is between negative 3 and positive 3. Echo, echo, echo. So let's see here. Second, you can... We got normal CDF, 0.85 on the left, 10 on the right, whammo, 0 .9, 0 0.198. Whoops. So for part B, I got 0.198. Okay, let's look at these next two questions. Probability of Z being less than negative 1.73. Okay, so let's see here. Oops. Zero, negative 1.73, somewhere out here. And I want the area that's less than that. So this would be a left bound of negative 10 and a right bound of negative 1.73. 0 0.042. 0 0.042. Well, I don't even have to do that. Shouldn't I be just be able to subtract this from one to find the other area on the other side? Sure. Now. For those of you wondering, you're saying to yourself, okay, this one does not equal negative 1.73, and this one does not equal 1.73, but you just use the complement theorem. What happens to the probability that Z equals negative 1.73 on the nose? How many numbers are there on the standard normal curve? How many values are in the domain? That's right, the domain is all real numbers. How many numbers is that, you might ask? Well, let me tell you. It's infinite. So, the probability that you're going to get one single number out of an infinite number of choices, get ready for this, it's zero. Now, there are several of you that are arguing with me right now, in your heads, in your minds, or with your parents. I don't know. But don't argue with me. 1 over infinity ain't never, ever, ever going to happen. Dog. Yeah, write that one down too, Schneider. That was good. All right, so. Um, hmm. Yeah, you guys can ponder on that one for a while because I know somebody will try to argue with me, George I or somebody. Uh, anyway, uh, let's see. Last example, example three, about what percent of the data in a standard normal distribution are within one standard deviation of the mean? Oh, this shouldn't be that hard. We just did it a few minutes ago, right? We're talking about normal CDF, left bound negative one, right bound positive one. Remember, think about the picture. Zeros here within one standard deviation on either side of the average, we've already done that, 68.3%. If you write 0 .683, I'm happy with that too. I don't really care whether you list it as a percentage or as a decimal. Um, what about the probability that Z, the absolute value of Z is less than 1? That's the exact same question as that one, right? Absolute value takes care of the negative, but uh, it's the exact same question because you're saying within one unit of the average, which happens to be zero. 
Okay, Doki. See you in class. Write that one down.